We need to talk about those Final Fantasy Pixel remasters. I've had a lot of people ask me about them, what are my thoughts about them, and to be perfectly honest, I figured it would be best to wait until they were all out. That way I could do one video talking about them as a whole rather than trying to make like six smaller individual videos. So this is going to be talking about all of the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters and I got some things to say. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Keeps. Go to keeps.com slash projared for 50% off your first order. Keeps is the home subscription service that helps men keep their hair. It is a known statistic that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. Preventing that is key, and Keeps is all about keeping the hair you have now before that can happen. Keeps is clinically proven to help stop hair loss and improve hair growth, all using treatments straight to your front door. Most customers start seeing results within six months of starting, so the sooner you start, the sooner it'll improve. I signed up for the service myself. I got to speak to a specialist who examined my hair and then set me up with the best plan for me. So now all I gotta do is use this on my head twice a day. Once again, go to keeps.com slash projared or use the link in the description below to get 50% off your first order and you can stop hair loss today. For the uninitiated, throughout all of last year and up to just a couple of weeks ago, Square Enix has been releasing pixel remasters of the Final Fantasies 1 through 6. The idea behind each being that they perfectly replicate the original game's experience from gameplay to music and sound, only modernized with updated graphics that still retain that pixel graphic look. And let's start with that. These games look freaking awesome. Every single enemy and character sprite looks like they got a new shade of pixels, uprising them from 8-bit and 16-bit to whatever amount of more bits. While the characters all look the same, it's the environments that got the greatest overhaul. There is so much detail in the battle scenes in any of the six games. Great lighting effects, some cool reflections, incredible depth. All of them look seriously fantastic. I can't tell you how many times I'd be walking around and I stop for a moment just to be like, damn, look at that water. What I like so much about these graphic updates is that they essentially all look exactly how I remembered them. I've played these games so many times over and over that even with more detailed sprites, my brain fully recognizes them. None of them feel out of place or overdone or incorrect or off. Even though there's more colors and shading and whatever other fancy pants art words you want to use, my mind and nostalgia can still look at them and say, yep, that's Cecil, all right. Basically, they nailed the perfect balance of nostalgic, sprite-based graphics and modern expectations. And that's no easy feat, so there should be serious commendations for pulling this off. Every single pixel remaster is visually perfect. All right, well, except for that one thing that everyone immediately points out. The text isn't great. It honestly does stand out like a sore thumb. It's such plain, unexciting font next to these incredibly beautiful retro graphics. It's extra jarring when the text here looks so out of place when the damage numbers that show up are still retro. That's what makes it so out of place. Now with all that, I think the negative response to all of it is way too exaggerated. The number of people I've seen, even in my own stream chats, calls this too abhorrent to endure is beyond hyperbolic. Look, I'm not in favor of it either, but it's not even close to a deal breaker. Like, calm the heck down, everyone. It's just text. If it really bothers you that much, there are numerous mods out there to replace the font that's easy to apply. A bigger complaint of mine is how much wasted space is on the battle screen. In every single one of the remasters, the left side of the screen is left completely bare. It makes everything off-center, and my mind can't help but ponder why there's nothing going on over there. I get it, though. I'm pretty sure that this part of the screen is left blank for the touchscreen button of the mobile versions, but I still can't help but be distracted by it. If you really want me to get nitpicky, and you do, then I have a very, very small issue with the graphics in Final Fantasy VI. Again, the character sprites are really, really good, and some of them got a very clear upgrade over their muddy SNES counterparts. But the enemies are completely unchanged? On one hand, that means the original pixel art was so good that they didn't really need to touch them up at all. On the other hand, the old color palette doesn't mix with the upgrades. The character sprites and environments all have a noticeably brighter hue of colors, and there's a bit of disconnect when next to the enemy sprites. 
Again, this is very, very nitpicky, but I would have liked the enemies improved at least somewhat. Undoubtedly, the most improved across all six games is the music. These new orchestral compositions are absolute auditory bliss. Much like the revamped graphics, my favorite thing about the new soundtracks to each game is that they're exactly how I remember them, only with real instruments playing instead of sound chips. Honestly, every single music track, hearing it for the first time in the context of its appearance in-game, is worth replaying all of these games alone. I know you can just listen to them all online by now, but trust me, it is not the same as hearing it in the moment. And once again, I need to bring up Final Fantasy VI, because they really went above and beyond with this one. All of the other games sound great, to be sure, but you can tell they really put an extra effort to the music of VI. There's even a few tracks that got additional measures of music that weren't there before, and they're all brilliant. Numerous times did the new music of Six's Pixel Remaster bring tears to my eyes. All the remasters sound incredible. Related to that, they also did a bit more in Final Fantasy VI, specifically the opera scene. It now plays out in their 2D HD style. There's even a few new sprite animations with it. I love it. It looks gorgeous. But this also just makes me want the whole game like this? Like, if you're gonna go do this amount, you might as well go the whole way, right? And I'm sure the rest of the games would have liked a little more love, too. Again, this is me being really nitpicky. As nice as all the graphics and music are, how they play is still the utmost important factor that comes to them. And, uh, they all play like they should. I'm not sure how else to elaborate on that. They all play pretty much exactly how they did to their original counterparts only with some key differences. Any and all gameplay bugs that were prevalent originally have all been remedied, most notably for spells in Final Fantasy 1 and like three dozen things in Final Fantasy 6. Also notable is that in each one of them, you can sprint to move faster and now walk diagonally everywhere. That may not seem like that much, but it certainly makes going through towns and the overworld much more convenient to traverse. There's also now a quick save option and an auto save, which triggers quite generously usually in new rooms or right before a boss. So now dying is far less punishing or time-wasting. Final Fantasy III benefits from this the most, because that final dungeon, the Crystal Tower, is now reasonable and far less infuriating to play through. There's also a map in the corner at all times, making it easy to find hidden chests and not get lost. One thing to keep in mind with each remaster is that they stayed true to their original games as much as possible, for better or worse. They are all representative of their original release, and nothing more. This means no extras tossed in from later releases. So if you're hoping to see the additional dungeons from any of the Game Boy Advance or PSP ports, they're not here. There's also minor changes in each game, mostly greatly beneficial ones. In Final Fantasy 1, your party attacks are no longer ineffective and will automatically switch targets when their original target dies. The same goes with Final Fantasy 2, which also now has a more reliable back row system. In Final Fantasy 3, you no longer need to worry about capacity points. Now you can change jobs whenever and wherever you want. Tons of jobs all got new abilities to use, making several of them way better. Again, autosave makes the Crystal Tower much easier, and there's some new save points to heal up at too. Final Fantasy IV got Cecil's Dark Knight abilities restored. You also now have unlimited inventory size. This means the fat chocobo is completely worthless, but whatever. I know Final Fantasy V got some rebalances and tweaks like the others, but besides from that, it's pretty darn close to the same as far as I can tell. Final Fantasy VI got the most gameplay changes that I noticed, but I also know this game the best. The main thing I noticed was that, aside from the balances and bug fixes, it also seemed much more difficult. There were a few bosses that I straight up died at, and that has never happened to me before. It was appreciated, honestly, since it was pretty easy originally and still isn't crushingly hard. More improvements include when Sabin uses a blitz, you can now select the one you want to do from a list, and it'll show you the input command. And if you screw up the input, it'll reset and let you try again. And the directional inputs are incredibly forgiving when it comes to accuracy, making it much easier to use any of his blitzes. Terra's morph is now super strong, and Cyan's Bushido, or sword tech, now has you selecting one from a list, and then he starts charging it after you select it. This way, your other party members aren't waiting around doing nothing while you wait for Cyan to charge, and they also felt like they all charged much faster. This was a much welcome change. 
So between all of the quality of life changes, new graphics, and music, are these new remasters the best way to play these games? Well, let's run through them. Look, I love the NES original of Final Fantasy 1, so there is a part of me that will always want to go back to it, but I know it's not the best version. I think the biggest question to ask yourself is, how important is extra stuff? And what kind of magic system do you want? I'm personally a fan of the spells per level style, but I know many prefer the MP system seen in every other Final Fantasy game. If you want the MP system or care about the extra content, then the best one to go with is still the PSP version. If you could care less about a bonus dungeon and want to play something that's even closer to the original, especially when it comes to magic, then nah, I still can't recommend the NES version. The Pixel Remaster is the way to go. Final Fantasy II, well, it's gonna suck no matter what way you play it. If you really, really have to, then the Pixel Remaster is the best version of it now. Final Fantasy III is an interesting one because it's wholly unique. Before, the only version of Final Fantasy III that the West got was the 3D remake for Nintendo DS that got ported to Steam. And that version is still perfectly acceptable, but the Pixel Remaster is the first and only time that we got a version that is truly representative of the original Famicom game. So almost by default, the most definitive version we can play is the Pixel Remaster. But the 3D remake is also a good alternative for a slightly more modernized take. It's a bit different with Final Fantasy IV, though. The main thing here, once again, is how much do you care about extra content? If you want as much of it as possible, then the PSP version is the best one. It has the extra dungeon from the GBA version, looks good, sounds good, and even has Final Fantasy IV The After Years, even though it sucks. I personally still really like the 3D version found on the DS. I like the new cutscenes and the voice acting, and I really like how difficult it is. It still comes down to preference for the most part, and if I had to pick one to play right now, it would be the 3D remake. After that, it would be the Pixel Remaster. That's mostly because I have a bit of nostalgia for the SNES original, so I like that it looks and sounds how my mind remembers it, and I don't personally consider the extra content from the others to be a major loss. But again, the PSP version is a great choice. Final Fantasy V has fewer options to choose from. Once more, it comes down to extra content. The Game Boy Advance version has a few additional jobs and bosses. However, the Pixel Remaster looks better, sounds better, and most importantly, plays smoother than all the other ones. I find the smoother play to be the most qualifying factor here. So I do think the Pixel Remaster is the best version of it. And for Final Fantasy VI, ugh, look, it's my favorite game of all time. I'm always going to have a major soft spot for the Super Nintendo original. And that may end up being my default version anyway. I am super biased in that regard. So barring that, what's better? The GBA version or the Pixel Remaster? Once more, the Game Boy Advance version has more stuff in it. There's four additional espers to acquire, two new dungeons, and several notable boss fights added in. But here's the thing, the GBA version plays like ass. I do not like the graphics in it, as they had to make several compromises to make it work. The music is also quite poor in comparison, to the point that I couldn't stand it. There's also some slowdown during bigger spell effects or just using the airship. That's too much for me. With how iconic Six's soundtrack and story elements are, they should not be degraded. I don't think it's worth the graphic and sound sacrifices just to get some extra stuff. And that's all it is in the end just stuff. Beautiful music and smooth gameplay is imperative for something like Final Fantasy VI. And if you're looking to play it again, or for the first time, then it should be the Pixel Remaster. Generally speaking, all the Pixel Remasters are worth experiencing. If you're a fan of any one of the games in any of their releases, you gotta check it out again. They're all still great games, not you, and a blast to play through. With them available on Steam and on mobile, they are the easiest to acquire and try for yourself. And if I had to give one more major criticism of all six of the remasters, it's that they're not on console yet. Please, Square, put them into a compilation and give them a physical release. I know we're all saying the Switch, but dude, put them on all the consoles. PS5, Xbox, frickin' Ouya or whatever. Hell, I'd even buy them all individually again if it means having them on an actual console. Please, 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 Square, I am a sucker.